And welcome back to the show. It's me, Hugh, and uh, Shannon is, is, is my guest, no longer my co-host. But uh, Shannon, we've had some fun so far today. It's great to actually work with you on the host-co-host scenario. It was fun. I've not done that before, so it was, uh, it was a riot. And I'm so glad to be here today. Thank you for this opportunity. Um, you know, I started Extraordinary Women TV here in this spot uh, years ago in 2010. Wow. Yeah, so it's been a while. The time. She Time flies. Flew by. And, and so this is really great to, to come back here. Yeah, well, I'm really looking forward to this here because we're talking about travel. Mm -hmm. And we, you got, we got a whole bunch of pictures of you in different locations all over the world. I've got a whole bunch of questions for you. Well, we're going to go through these pictures during the interview. But So what are you doing these days? You're doing a travel blog? or Yeah, yeah so um, I, uh, I'm a travel writer. And so I do write. Uh, it's, it's more... Occasionally, I write uh, travel pieces. Travel is, um, it's my, the thing that really drives me, it's my passion. And, and, uh, Are you a Sagittarius? Inspires me. No, I'm a Gemini. Oh. So I get my creative juice, actually, from traveling. So um, I really have it in my heart to inspire people to just travel. To go see our beautiful world. The world is big, it's magnificent. Um, there's a lot to experience from different cultures. Okay, I have a question yeah. before we get into it. Yes. Have you ever had the opportunity to fly from uh, one city in the Southern Hemisphere to another city in the Southern Hemisphere? From one to... You know, uh, like... Yes, I've, well, I've, yeah, in South America I where, have, yes. Where, oh, where did you fly from? From Chile to uh, Argentina. Oh. Okay, that probably doesn't That's count. short. Yeah. I'm talking about the trans-oceanic flights. I just wondered if you've done that in the southern hemisphere. You Not know what I'm yet. getting at. Some people say the Earth is flat. Yeah, oh yeah. yeah. Well. So what, what, yes. what, you've been in air, airplanes many times, right? Many times, yes. When you look out the window, is the horizon flat or is it curved? Well, you. It's, geez, I don't know. That's a really good question. <laughs> Nothing. Okay, good. Uh, well, we'll leave that for another uh, interview, if we ever get Sasha back in here. But, uh, okay, so um, we're talking about travel and the benefits of travel. So, right. I mean, uh, some people, um, what are the benefits of travel? Well, there, you know, there are a lot of benefits to, to travel. And I can speak for myself, coming from my own experience. Um, one is, it, it makes us more creative. So we, just by simply getting out of our daily routine uh, and going somewhere else, just simply by putting that distance, uh, it enables us to start thinking differently. Um, it ignites our senses. Um, and we start to, I know that for me, I start to have more ideas. I mean, I find that uh, when I'm flying in an airplane, it can be some of the most productive time um, you're kind of like stuck there in a plane, you have nowhere to go, yeah. um, and you have no distractions really, or very limited distractions, and I can actually work. Yeah. Um, but it, it can make us more creative. Um, developing uh, more self-worth and confidence, especially when you're traveling alone, and particularly if you're a woman uh -huh. traveling alone. Um, it's a great way to build self-worth and, and confidence uh, in yourself. I mean, really, we, we go into, we're in survival mode a lot of the time when we're traveling because, mm -hmm. you know, we're at the back of our mind, we're, you know, wanting to be safe, so we're thinking of safety. Um, if you're traveling in a country with the, the mother language that you don't speak, um, you're going to be in survival mode because you have to, you have to learn the language. You've got to be able to communicate um, just basics. So, um, self worth and self confidence uh, is something that um, travel helps us develop. You know what? I, I'm just, I can agree with you totally when uh, I, I just had uh, a train trip from Montreal back to Toronto, uh, I don't know, a couple months ago. But I got so much done on that train trip, it was insane, right? Uh, train travel is great for that. You know? I mean, it's the same as the plane, though, really, right? Yeah. You're stuck. You're in a metal box for four or five or six yeah. hours, and uh, you can get you a lot done. World go by. But to me, that's not yeah. really what travel's about. In the right. old days, part of the traveling was was, or the 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 the, the trip was part of the, the experience. You know, if right. you were taking a 
because in the old days, I remember my grandmother, she went to a Europe and she took a boat, right? Be that was before everybody, you know, plane travel was so... Uh, uh, Prevalent? Yeah, right? So she actually took a boat and that was a big part of the whole experience yeah. was that... Uh, was slow that travel. <laughs> slow travel. So you got right. it in the cruise and, you know, whatever you're experiencing at yeah. the destination. But the other thing that I find about travel is that... Um, and I had this experience probably every time I travel, but in particular when I was down in New Orleans for th three or four weeks, and it, I swear it was like a whole lifetime that I was down there. Like every day seemed so long, or the week, the whole, the three week period. It's just like here, three weeks can go by in your normal life. Yeah. In a blink of an go, eye. Uh, and, and we're, often we're in autopilot when yeah. we're at home. Yeah. Um, we are in our comfort zone, we're in autopilot, we are in our daily routines, and travel gets us out of that. Yeah. You know, that is one, of, and, it, and it doesn't have to be international travel, it does not have to be exciting, adventurous travel, um, really just, just unplugging and just getting away, going to Niagara on the lake, for instance, for a day, or even just travel if money is an issue, just travel around your own community. No, you can do so right? much here in Toronto, even riding your bike up the Don exactly. Valley or just... Seeing something new. And it's this whole idea, which is great for your brain, is yeah. that it's seeing something new, experiencing something new constantly. Yeah. You know, so we are really constantly thinking and, um, and, and you know, be, uh, being in the moment, reflecting, and there's so many, so many benefits. We meet new friends. Over That's right. Or right? sometimes People even old friends. World? Surprising synchronicities or, can happen, yes, right? Yes, and I have bumped into old friends at some other place in the world yeah. on, you know, train platforms. I know. It's, in airports, yeah, you know? Yeah. It's great. Okay, so why don't we, we got some pictures here. Yeah, I'll, we do have Let's some dive pictures. into these pictures because... Uh, so, you know, to explain, you know, I'm a, you know, as a travel journalist, I'm not a uh, professional photographer, but... Uh, well, how did you take this picture? You're sitting on a coffee table in front of the Taj Mahal. I am sitting in the Taj Mahal, and uh, somebody took that for me. I'm very grateful. That's great. Did so you go it's inside? It's an iconic place. I did. Um, it's a stunning, be beautiful love letter from a man to his um, deceased wife. This is the story behind the Taj Mahal. It's a What's inside? Love story. You only see the outside. Yeah, it's, uh, it's cavernous. Yeah. Uh, from what I recall, but yeah, homey. Except it's, uh, but the art, uh, but you know, stunning tile work. I've never been there, but Jay Stoyan went there, I think, and he wrote an elephant. I don't know if it was in front of that. Uh, no, I'm, I don't recall seeing any elephants at the Taj Mahal. Oh, okay. No. Okay, let's look at some more of these yes. uh, pictures. Let's... So, this is Switzerland. This is uh, in the Valais region. What, what? And that's a glacial uh, lake. Isn't that stunning? No, what time of year was that? This was fall. And what was the temperature there that day? It was chilly that day. Yeah. And how high up are you, oh, elevation-wise? We were at, at the timberline, just above the timberline. So that's where where vegetation really doesn't okay. stop kind of growing. Did you have to climb up there? Or how did you uh, get no, there? No, we drove. We went, you see that there's a yeah, road, yeah, actually. Um, we, we went by car. And we went up to uh, uh, to uh, a pasture, a cow pasture, uh, and that day we learned how Swiss cheese was made. Yeah, how do they get the holes so, in it? That's the most important part of Swiss yes, cheese. Yes, that's right. This was, I don't mean particularly the brand Swiss cheese, we just learned uh, how they made cheese. Oh, I see. The big blocks I of cheese. I see what you're saying, so, okay. Yeah, Remember, it was a great day. Did you ever uh, read uh, Heidi? I, I thought book. of Heidi when yeah, I was yeah. there, you know? Right but let me tell you, Switzerland is one of my favorite places in the world to go. I mean, it's just so, so beautiful. I mean, we got stuff like that in the Rockies, though, too, right? We absolutely Including do. the water fortunate. that color. Yeah. Yes, up west. Yep. Yeah. Okay, next. next. So this is Wyoming. Uh, I was in Wyoming just uh, this last year. Um, Wyoming is, is uh, absolutely stunning in its own way. Very... Um, can drive for a long time and not see anything. But what's interesting about Wyoming is this year they are celebrating. Um, it's the first territory in the world where women uh, got the vote to write, uh, the right. right to vote. Ah. 
Uh, and there's a lot of pioneering women um, in, in Wyoming. So this is, this is uh, driving through the state. Did you go see Devil's Peak while I you were there? did not. Oh. Did go did go hiking, though. Oh, okay. Um, That's great. I always wanted to see Devil's Peak because it was in Close Encounters. I love oh, that. Oh, right, yeah. You know? But I got to go to Cheyenne. Okay. Cheyenne was cool. You what know? about Casper? Casper, no. Okay. Because this kind of looks like a friendly ghost right here. This That's thing. right. Okay. Next one. This is Wyoming. We're driving. Um, <laughs> we're driving um, on our way to go to a ski lodge. See, there's some actually skiing. In Was Wyoming. that the same trip as that last photo? Yes. Yeah. Because you go from from one to another to snow yeah. now. Wow. Yeah. Wyoming. Wyoming. What made you go to Wyoming? Well, it was a it was a media trip. Um, so just some a group of uh, travel writers from oh. around North America. So we were um, writing about uh, the 150th anniversary of uh, the women's right to oh. vote. So was this something sponsored by the state of Wyoming, the tourist it board, was, or something yeah. like that? Yeah. Just curious yeah. because yes, uh, that's cool. Okay. Next, did you go skiing? That's my dog, Bob. No, was he on the trip with you? He was not. Or are you just slipping but him in here because you want him, him here. to get him on he TV? He turns 14 on Thursday. And <laughs> well, yeah, he, he's, he's got a, a wet nose. That means character. he's healthy, right? Yes. Um, he, had a, he had a tough, uh, a tough uh, spring and summer, but uh, you know, you can bring your dog here anytime. You you bring your dog to the studio because we're, we're dog friendly here at that channel. Yeah, he would love that. Okay, bring him. Okay. Yeah, so I have to slip my dog in. Yeah, slip him in. Okay. So this is Vienna. Vienna? I've never been to Vienna. Vienna, one of my very favorite cities. Actually, I have been by Vienna. I drove through the highway, but I didn't go downtown. Yeah. It looks European. How does Vienna compare to Budapest, just downriver? Vienna, I mean, a lot of European cities have a lot of similarities, don't they, in terms of the um, architecture. Um, because Vienna used to be the place. Yes. Right? Right. It was the, the place. We even had a beer named Old Vienna. Yes. Right? Uh, Vienna, um, um, I didn't have a chance. I've uh, been to Vienna a couple of times. This, this day was um, a short day. We were there on a Viking River cruise. Oh. And it was a day trip. So we had a, a bus tour yeah. of Vienna. Beautiful. I love those river cruise ideas. Yeah, it was ideas. great. I've never been on one, but I just like the idea. Next one. This is um, this is Delhi. It looks like you're cheating, Shannon. You should be doing that pose, but instead you're yes. taking a selfie. So this is International Yoga Day in Delhi, okay. yep. and um, I was there at a special VIP uh, event. And um, yes, it was very hot. It was forty Celsius at about eight. Seven eight in the morning. It was hot. Holy cow! Yes. Okay, next. More yoga. Yeah, a yoga guru uh, taking us through um, some postures, so learning a lot about yoga. Very nice. Next. Yeah. Oh. This is Rajasthan in India. And this is at one of the forts, and look at the tile work. It's just really It looks like a tar work. Tartarian architecture, clearly. It's uh, very, very, very beautiful. So this is one of my favorite places in the world, too, uh, Rajasthan. Hmm. Um, India's got so much. Jay, this is Jaipur in particular, yeah. This I just, mean, you can't even right. think about ever doing all of India. No, it's, I mean, you can spend your life trying yeah. to see India. And I'm really uh, blessed because I have had an opportunity to go to the northeast, to the north, to the west. Um, I have not yet seen the south, so. And it's amazing it. to think that at one time, not too long ago, India, Pakistan, uh, Bangladesh, were all the same country, yeah. right? Really. Yeah. And if you look at it, we talk about how populated China is, but really, if you add up, all, all what was formerly India, way more population than, than China, right? And, uh, wow. Okay, next one. Oh. This is Northeast India. This is Assam. Uh, and I was there covering a festival. So Where'd you get that I outfit? I was being interviewed. Do you have that outfit uh, now? I have that outfit now, and I actually bought that in Toronto Markham, actually. I, I bought them he that here to take with me, but it was very humid. It was, <laughs> again, that was like a 40 Celsius... 
you know, it's prob- it was really I hot. hear if you eat a lot of spice, that's probably why the food is so spicy it's in exactly these why the hot food countries, is, it is. right? Because it has a, it operates as a cooling system, so it, yeah. it, 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 it cools us down. Okay, yeah. next. So this is uh, the tea gardens in Assam, um, wow. where the Assam tea comes from. Oh. Yeah. Beautiful. It is beautiful. Next. I'm dancing with the tribes in uh, Gohadi, Assam. Oh, there you at are. At the festival, yeah. Uh, this photo, or variations of it, um, <laughs> appeared in a number of um, newspapers um, across India and around the world. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> yeah, it was fun. Yeah, I love to dance. And uh, so, you know, this is one of the, the northeastern uh, tribes in India. Okay. Very tribal area. Next one. This is oh, Budapest. That's right. Mm, yeah. Yeah. So again, uh, this was a stop on my Viking River River cruise for a day. Uh, actually, we had well, a little bit more than a day in, in Budapest. So it began in Budapest. Mm. Where did it end? It ended in Nuremberg, Germany. Oh, you were going upriver? Yeah, we went the opposite way. Mm. So. Did you place. stop at any of the restaurants over near the uh, Capitol building? the parliament building here? We did not stop in any restaurants there. Um, I think that most of my meals in Budapest were actually on the, sh- on oh, the ship. Yeah. Beautiful. I went canoeing on the Danube. Did you? In, really? in, in Budapest, yeah. Saw, oh, some nud- saw some nudists. Oh, really? Oh, yes. Budapest, That's right. Okay, next one. Uh, and this is back, we're back here at Switzerland. This is the um, driving up um, into the the valet region. Okay, great. Next. Higher, higher, and higher. Hey, where's this? This is Madeira. Have some Madeira, Madea. This is. Uh, I th- where's Madeira? Actually, no. My, my uh, I'm, I'm wrong. This is actually the Azores. This is uh, São Miguel. Oh, so Island. those are those islands. Yes. Like sort of off Africa. Yeah, they're Portuguese. And Iberia, That's right. right? Yeah. So this is um, <coughs> this is uh, the Azores. What was it like there? Loved it. Perfect temperature all year round. There are no bugs. Huh. It's affordable. Is it? It's four and a half hours approximately to fly from Toronto to Ponta de Gal- um, Delgado, yeah. which is the city on the island of San Miguel, which is the largest island. It's, it's, it's a pretty quick ride um, and um, with Azores Airlines. And, um, you know, it's a great alternative to going to Costa Rica or to, you know, the Dominican Republic or even to Florida. It's a really great alternative and it's, it's fabulous. The food is great, the, the, you know, stunning nature. Plus, even if your plane runs out of gas, if you've got a good pilot, you can probably still make it there. You can still, you can glide. Okay, good. That's right. And this is the Azores. This is San Miguel. Wow. Um, Lots and lots of flowers mm. on this island. Beautiful. What time yeah. of year were you there? This was um, early summer, I believe. Okay. Spring. And it doesn't get as hot there as it does here no, in the summer? No, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty, it's, Great. It, it's, it's, it's a, like a perfect temperature year round. Next. Not too hot, not too cool. Goldilocks zone. This is Azores. This is uh, San Miguel. Beautiful. Okay, next. Oh. And this is, um, uh, Madeira in Funchal. And where is uh, where is Madeira? In Spain? So Madeira Portugal? is Portugal. It's it's a Portuguese island. Correct? Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> but Madeira is closer to um, to Africa. Okay. Yeah. Next. This Uh-oh. is this is Assam. Is he charging? Uh, no. This is so <laughs> good thing. No. I've had an elephant charge me in Thailand, but um, this is on safari in. In India, in Assam, um, uh, Kazaranga Park, yeah. and um, the one-horned rhinos are pretty rare. So this is a one-horned rhino, and it was as close as I could get to them. Those are the real-life unicorns. Yeah, that's right. It's oh. a unicorn. Okay, next. So this is Switzerland. This is um, the vineyards in the Valais region. I loved this region. Um, filled with vineyards and orchards, fruit, um, 
and it's not that far to drive from Geneva. Oh, it's lovely. Beautiful. Yeah, surrounded by mountains. Okay, next one. Okay. Oh, this is. So yeah. I am standing in the spot where the World Wide Web was invented, right there. Right there. That's, that, that's it. Where was that? In. Uh, at CERN. The that's in. Um, Bern. Or where is it's it? At the border of France and Switzerland. You notice Actually, the logo. This is over in France. You see the logo. Yes. You notice it says six, six, six. Six, six, six. Or it could be nine, six. They just say nine. nothing. So uh, yeah, well. Um, so that's that's the spot right there. Kind that's incredible. Isn't it? Well, it's uh, and now we're all addicted to it. Yeah. And that's where it all started. That's all where it began. And now they're doing the uh, Large Hadron Collider. So I toured that. I toured the colliders. I was yeah. able to go 80, 80 meters down. Um, and I got to see uh, the collider, which is pretty massive. It's like a big factory down underground. It's pretty wild. So. That is amazing. That, that would be a great tour. And the study of uh, the God particle. Right. And finding the God particle. And I think they have a statue of the Hindu god Kali in front of the building. Did you see that? Yeah, I don't recall seeing that. I'll have the to destroyer to of worlds. Oh, okay. Okay, next one. Let's see what else we have. This is um, Switzerland. I mean, you know, this is uh, in a restaurant that uh, revolves around 360 oh, yeah? degrees. And isn't that stunning? You're looking that's a view from lunch. <laughs> it looks like you're pretty high up, and it's probably not yes. the winter, and there's lots of snow. That's what was right. the temperature outside there? Do you know? I don't know what the temperature, but we did need um, coats. Coats. Because I know, yeah, you go up high up, but it gets cold. But we went to it. What was interesting too here is we went to an uh, an ice cave actually, where there's ice sculptures. Uh, underground in a glacial glacial um, cave and that was really an interesting experience okay next one um, this is a festival in Geneva uh, food and wine festivals yeah. are great in Europe oh yeah and you're all about the wine too right oh yeah I mean it's it, and it was great and I love actually I love Swiss wine and this trip to this particular trip to Geneva, um, I learned a lot about wine, and when I came back, I decided to go study wine. So I, I had enrolled in the uh, George Brown wine program, and it was this trip that inspired me to do so. Amazing. Yeah. Okay, next. Uh, this is Wyoming. We were hiking. You know, this looks like a pyramid, not a mountain. Yeah, I know. I wonder if so it's one of those secret we were, pyramids. It's a group of women, and we were, um, uh, our guide was a company called Hike Like a Woman, and uh, it was fun. It was a great day. <laughs> <coughs> Next one, please. Oh, we're back to you. Well, that was a great little travelogue that you just took us along. Now, um, so your blog, now this paper, we're, we're just going to, this paper was about all the benefits of travel? Yeah, so we were just talking about some of the benefits of travel. And, you know, I, as I was saying earlier, I mean, I love to travel. It is my, it is my passion. Um, it's, it's, it's really the thing that keeps me going. And, you know, I just think that it, it, it opens our minds. And, and, you know, if we, if we look at what's happening in the United States, right now politically I think if a lot of people just got up and traveled and could see and experience different cultures and ways of living um, you know it wouldn't be such a, a, a big issue Canadians travel more internationally than Americans do the stats show us because um, we know how to get our passports <laughs> <laughs> but you know it, by experiencing different cultures different foods seeing how people live uh, around the world we are less judgmental and we can become more compassionate uh, and feel it helps facilitate understanding and, and, and love. So I would just love to see people hit the road and, you know, pack a bag and go somewhere. So, okay, so now where can people um, 
access your your travel writings or your other stuff? So my blog is at shannonskinner.com. Okay. Uh, my Facebook page, uh, I have a travel page there. It's uh, official Shannon Skinner. So that's what and they type in on Facebook, official yeah. Scan Shannon, Shannon Skinner. Skinner. Yeah. Okay. And um, and if they go there, they'll see a lot of my travel videos, my vlogs. I mean, these are not professional productions; they're <laughs> vlogs. But that, uh, they, they can be great, though vlogs, <laughs> right? Especially yeah. when they're great. Well, this so. has been. Anything? Oh, we got some videos we're going to show, right? Oh, As yeah, we, I got a couple of my, my little videos, my so, vlogs. Yeah, okay, good. So we get to actually see these. So, but people know how to get in touch with you. And uh, do we want to leave people with a, a one final call to action before we uh, check out these vlogs? I just think that get inspired through travel. You know, determine what kind of travel you would love to do. Um, do some research. Go somewhere that you have not gone before. Uh, and go have an experience okay and then tell the world about it all right well we're gonna get three experiences right now because we're gonna check out these videos and uh, I just want to say thanks Shannon for uh, just bringing this taking us around the world a little bit today and uh, and also thanks for co-hosting and awesome. doing a great show yeah, great. So. thank you and thank you again for um, giving me the start that I had uh, back in 2010 when I started extraordinary women TV and uh, so it has a lot of meaning for me to come back and talk to you about the thing that I really love to do uh, in my life. Yeah. Okay, great. So, ShannonSkinner.com, uh, ExtraordinaryWomenTV.com. And here's Shannon. We're going we're gonna to have a little bit more world travel. Thanks. That's it for the show, except for these videos. And we'll see you next time here, LiquidLaunch.Channel.com. Hi, I'm Shannon Skinner, and I'm in Madeira. I'm going to show you some highlights of the island. So let's go. Shannon Skinner and I'm in the Azores. I'm on the island of San Miguel. by bus in the medieval village of Sayon in Switzerland's Valais region. It is a perfect day for a pilgrimage. I'm here to walk the Ferronet path, a spiritual pilgrimage that traces the life of Switzerland's legendary outlaw, Joseph Samuel Ferronet, known as the Swiss Robin Hood. It starts in Sayon and ends at the top of a hill at the world's smallest vineyard, owned by the Dalai Lama which was bequeathed to him and is a memorial for Ferronet. It has only three vines. The grapes are used in the production of wine that is sold to raise money for charity. The vineyard is taken care of by many celebrities and their names appear on signs. 
Along the path, there are 21 extraordinary stained glass stations that tell the story of the counterfeit's life. A criminal on the run who loved women, wine, and making counterfeit money, and giving it to the poor. Buried in Seyon, he died in mysterious circumstances. The Valais is one of Switzerland's most important wine regions. Vehicles are not allowed to protect the vines. This is a welcoming place for silence and contemplation. As the story goes, Farronay, by now, has been stripped of all material possessions. Here is the last Farronay window, immortality. He is free. On full display is a magnificent Rhone Valley and Alps. With nothing but my camera, I feel free. After our walk, I check into my hotel, Le Bain de Sion, to relax in its thermal baths. With the sun setting, I look up to the hill where I walked amongst the vines and think of Farronay.